Senator Richard Durbin praised a decision by President Biden to impose sanctions on several associates of Vladimir Putin for the imprisonment of Vladimir Karamurza, a Russian historian who survived two poisoning attempts by the Kremlin and has been jailed in Moscow for nearly a year after speaking out against the war in Ukraine. He faces the prospect of more than 35 years in prison. Our next guest, Nadia Tolokonikova, the co-founder of Pussy Riot, spent roughly two years in Putin's gulag after being jailed for singing a protest song in Moscow. And now Nadia Tolokonikova could again be jailed by Russian authorities for staging an art exhibit in Los Angeles that featured an installation titled Putin's Ashes. Russian authorities have already detained and raided the homes of several people involved in that installation, including another member of Pussy Riot and a relative of Nadia Tolokonikova. Joining us now is Nadia Tolokonikova, founding member of the Russian protest art collective Pussy Riot. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, what has happened as a result of that art installation you did in Los Angeles last month? What has happened in Russia? Three searches uh, at houses of people who are not directly connected to Putin's ashes installation. Um, two searches at my relatives houses who are still in Russia and one search at uh, Rita Flores' house, which is um, she's a member of Pusera, but she wasn't connected anyhow to Putin's ashes. She's um, supportive, though. I spoke with her. She's really proud of this uh, art piece, and she wants me to go on. And so uh, when, when you were doing it, do you have to consider what might they do to my loved ones in Russia when I do this? I have to consider it. <laughs> And this is a tool that Putin uses not just against me, but against a lot of the opposition leaders. And it's always a question of communication. Like in any family, you talk to your relatives, you talk to people who support you in Russia. And if they're willing to take these risks, um, if they are, you just keep going. What is the hope uh, with you and your, your Russian friends, and I know you're uh, close to Alexei Navalny, and, and about, about what can happen in Russia? We watch it. We watch this war, and we don't know what's going to happen, and we don't know how long it's going to last, but we are kind of accustomed to covering wars that way without, without having an expectation of what happens next. Uh, do you, what are your specific hopes for what can happen? It's a really good question, because I, I like to think about positive versions of the future. I think we're trapped into a really depressing news cycle, 24 hours news cycle, when we talk about scandals and problems and issues. Um, we rarely talk about longer term future, but I, I belong to that school of thought that says that Russia is part of the West, and we want to be a, a normal European country with European values. We want to have good education, good, accessible medicine, real democracy. We want to have parliamentary republic, not presidential republic, because it's proven not to be working in our country because um, people just want to grab power. I think it's pretty international. Mm -hmm. But um, we believe that parliamentary republic can protect one person from grabbing too much power. But as you go forward, um, do, you, do you have time frames in, in, vol, in your minds about this is what we hope at a certain point in time? And listen, I can understand if you don't. We've had struggles in this world that have gone on for 50 years, and people in the middle of that were not thinking, you know, two years from now it'll be done. You know? um, well, it was much more, um, it, it was much easier to predict what's going to happen before the beginning of full-scale invasion in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Now, Putin destroyed not just Ukrainian cities, but he also destroyed Russia's prospects. And he destroyed the face of my country. And it's not, um, it's not really fully up to us. It's a lot up to Ukrainian people, whether they will forgive us and whether they will be willing to have Russia alongside with them in the 
beautiful new world where Ukraine is a part of the European Union, whether they're going to be willing to work with Russia. And President Zelensky said that he's going to be open to having conversations with someone else, but not Vladimir Putin representing Russia. And I think the very first step that Russia needs to take is to change its leadership. And then after that, we can really think about our future. But it is really turbulent, difficult time for our country and don't really know what time frame it could be. But I know I'm really hopeful for Russia still, because with with the amount of repressions and censorship that exists right now, it's really difficult to say how many people really stand against the war. But I hear their voices. They're not loud because they can face murder. <laughs> they can face 15 years in jail, but they exist. <laughs>